Hello, welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. I'm your host, Tim Smith, and our guest today is Dr. Timnit Gebru. Dr. Gebru recently began working as a research scientist at Google AI after, after completing her postdoc research in the Fairness, Accountability, Transparency, and Ethics Group at Microsoft Research. Her research currently targets ethical considerations of data mining projects and methods to audit and mitigate bias. Dr. Gebru received her PhD from the Stanford Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, and her work has been featured in the New York Times, The Economist, and MIT Tech Review. She is the co-founder of Black in AI, where she works to both increase diversity in the artificial intelligence field and reduce the negative impacts of racial bias in data. Today, Dr. Gabru will discuss current issues regarding the relationship between race and artificial intelligence, as well as the importance of diversity in technology. Dr. Gabru, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And it's a pleasure meeting you, and welcome to Indiana. Thank you. <laughs> you recently co-authored a study examining facial recognition technology and the effect of skin color on the software's accuracy. Talk to us about your findings from this research and some of the greater societal effects. Um, so I did this research with Joy Bolamini of MIT, and um, it started uh, with her a long time ago when she was doing um, an art, uh, some class, noticing that uh, open source computer vision uh, face detection tools mm. wouldn't detect her face unless, and they would detect her roommate's face, um, and mm -hmm. then she would put on a white mask and it would detect her face to take it off, it wouldn't detect her face. And so by then, by the time I arrived, she had been talking about this, doing more research, um, investigating it more, and we decided to do a systematic analysis mm. of, um, of these tools um, as part of her uh, master's thesis. And so um, for this paper that you discussed, we kind of just wanted to simplify the problem, and we looked at commercial gender classification APIs. So mm. what does it mean? They just they look at a face, these APIs look at a face, and they... It, it tells you, you know, uh, whether the face is that of a man or a woman. So, you know, it's binary labels, apps, no uh, other identities, mm. um, and they're not very sophisticated identities. And so um, even within this very constrained environment, we found that um, there, are, there are very high disparities and error rates for um, lighter skinned uh, men versus darker skinned women and even there's disparities uh, if you look at by gender or you look by skin type. So that was the finding of this, um, this paper and I believe that it has really actually changed the industry because um, it's not just about face recognition tools, right? It's about what about, what about all these other tools that are being used um, and the, what are th their disparities and it's, it started the conversation of whether or not we should even use face recognition um, tools in law enforcement and the fact that they should be regulated. Um, Senator Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and others wrote a letter recently to the FBI asking them to investigate their use of face recognition. So I really believe that it's had a transformative effect. Great, thank you. So what is causing such wide discrepancies to occur? Is it simply due to the limitations with current technology or are underlying issues creating these biases? Um, I think it depends. So in what, what um, I believe uh, in what happened in our case is that you know, all, all of these technologies, a lot of them, use data to train their algorithms. Mm -hmm. And the question is who's represented in the data and who's not, and how do they get the data? Most of the time, um, researchers, even um, industry practitioners, most of us, you know, we don't like the data gathering process. That's not what we all used to consider as part of our, yeah. you know, the work that we did. But um, so, you know, we try to get like the easiest possible data. You know, maybe people use faces of celebrities or it's anything you can scrape off the web. So you have to think who are, uh, who are the people represented in these data sets? Um, who, are, who are the people considered celebrities? So it, it, it stems from the societal biases and structural biases that we have in our society. 
and then that feeds into the data, mm -hmm. and then you know you you train an algorithm based on biased data, and you'll get biased results. And but then you know there are so this was our specific case. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Outside of facial recognition software, are you seeing inherent bias impact other areas of AI? Yes, absolutely. Um, so my research, I, ha I hadn't done research showing um, bias in other areas, but many others have. So for example, um, a bunch of people showed, including Tolga and Adam uh, Kalai and um, their collaborators, showed that um, there are there is bias in natural language processing tools. So mm. one um, prominent example is something called word embeddings that you know, let's say you can use to um, train analogy detectors and the anal I'm sorry, analogy generators and mm. the analogy that these word embeddings generated said, you know, man is to computer um, science as woman is to homemaker or, you know, man is to doctor as woman is to nurse, mm. which is not a lot of times when I just when I say this, actually, the audience even says when I say man is to doctor as woman is to and they say nurse. Uh, but no, right? Like there's no reason, there's nothing in our language that says that man is, you know, woman is nurse and man is doctor, right? So, so there, are, there are so many um, biases in all of these tools that we're using and I, I believe we don't, we don't even know the extent of it and we don't know, um, there are things that we might even be overlooking while we're trying to find these biases. Yeah, great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. As the technology continues to advance and become more integrated with society, what can be done to reduce these issues? I think that um, the approaches have to be multifaceted, right? Mm. So I don't think there's a single silver bullet at all. Um, but there are so many, there are a lot of different approaches that need to be taken into account. Um, one of them is that tech, tech People in tech companies or researchers um, in computer science and artificial intelligence, inherently, uh, the way we've been doing this education, I think that we don't encourage them to think about the social context, mm. and we weed out people who, you know, understand specific social contexts. You know, um, and as 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 um, people go higher and higher levels, or you know, they go to grad school, or whatever, and they get even more and more uh, abstracted out and more and more weeded out. Um, and so what, that's one thing I've noticed is that we need to encourage people who are, you know, who have an art background or a philosophy background, a social science background to be in computer science mm. and, and, and think of technology from that vantage point as well. And um, so for me, that's the main thing I think about. And um, also when we're creating products or when, create, when we're creating tools, we should think about how these tools could actually be used, right? Mm. Like do, do the benefits outweigh the risks yeah, at absolutely. the moment and who's being impacted adversely versus not. And in terms of, um, and, and you know, it has to be an interdisciplinary approach mm. for sure. Um, and um, lastly, you know, we definitely have to look at what kinds of data sets we're using to train these algorithms and also what kind of the algorithms that we're using themselves. Mm. You know, c should we have uh, different methods, uh, certain metrics of fairness that people have proposed, for example, baked into these algorithms. So it's, I think many different things need to happen. And I, I really believe that at the f core of it is an understanding that diversity and inclusion and is, is, is not charity, it's, it's, it's actually um, domain knowledge and mm -hmm. that people need to acknowledge that um, because that domain knowledge then allows people to start critically investigating these algorithms and what kinds of issues they might have. Mm -hmm. And also I think we, we should respect, a, there is an inherent thing I see in computer science where there is a lack of respect for some other disciplines that are not seen as quantitative or something like mm. that. And I really think there needs to be a fundamental shift in our uh, understanding of that. Let's hope it happens quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's starting to happen. Yeah, good, mm -hmm. good. So Tim needs to tell us more about your Black in AI organization. So uh, Black and AI is an organization that is trying to increase um, the representation of black people in artificial intelligence 
and also an organization that um, is is trying to support uh, those who already exist, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't feel isolated. So they feel like they have a community, and to foster collaborations, to um, bring attention to them, you know, op uh, opportunities that exist, um, encourage them to apply to certain positions, um, help, you know, with applications and other things like you know try to give people opportunities for speaking opportunities or interviews or just bring bring visibility to the work that people in the community are doing fantastic tell me more about its genesis oh so so that what happened is that um i um so <laughs> first time i went to a conference called nips uh, it's a, a machine learning conference mm. it was in 2015 i went in montreal and i came back just completely um, shocked and disillusioned and, you know, uh, very lack of diversity. And um, after that, I started a small mailing list where I was adding um, people I knew. Uh, I, I, I just, any black person I saw at a talk or at a conference or mm -hmm. whatever, it was like just a very few groups of people. And we would, you know, sometimes have lunch and, and discuss things over email. And so that was that was kind of it. I always thought about like maybe what I would want to do with it. But then the second time I went to this NIPS conference was in Barcelona in Spain. And I by then um, the hype has, for AI had or like had been kind of increasing exponentially. Everybody was talking about it. And that by then I had known about these bias issues mm -hmm. of bias and fairness and had been starting to read up on it more. And I went to Barcelona and um, I saw um, I was counting like how many black people did I count, and it was like six, mm. um, and I didn't so see any other black women. And Out of how many would you guess? So I said an estimated. I thought like it was an estimated eighty five hundred, but then I later found out the estimate is probably more like five or six thousand. Mm. Yeah, so six. five thousand, right? And this is an international conference, wow. um, international conference from mm. all over the world, and I was, sh you know, pretty shocked. And when I came back from that conference, I felt like a sense of urgency and panic, mm. um, especially combined with my, you know, what I'd been reading about bias and fairness and all of these issues. Um, and so then I started adding like even more people to mm. my, my little mailing list. Um, and then at some point, um, uh, there was a few people I added and then they added more people. Like uh, the, the most key person was uh, Red Eight uh, Ababa, who, uh, mm. who I met some other guy at a conference was like, oh, I know her, she's also Ethiopian, you know? And then um, when she, I added her and I added uh, Mustafa and uh, the two, you know, and then we had this idea of creating a Facebook group and a Google group because the email list was getting larger. Mm. We were discussing, um, you know, workshops and uh, how to have a workshop. So that's why we had the first workshop and now it's grown. And my, uh, Reddit just um, tweeted a, a earlier saying that um, it's grown to over a thousand people now, uh, members and uh, over a thousand people in the black community worldwide and also like 200 allies. And it's growing and I, you know, but for us, it's not about just growth in numbers. Mm. It's the right type of growth. Mm. So I personally would rather have slower growth with the right mission and the right type of um, making sure we have diversity within our own group, right? Mm. Um, and then rather than just like exploding, you know. Um, so yeah, so that's, 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 that's Black and AI. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I wish you exactly that, what you want. The Thank right you. growth, the right people. Uh, I was very also excited to hear about the advocacy piece as well. So I wish you the best. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Of course. So we see clear issues regarding gender and racial representation in STEM industries, and specifically within emerging technology fields. What are the effects of this lack of representation, and what can the business community do to combat this? There, the lack of representation is, I think, why, why we are where we are today uh, with some of these issues that we're seeing. And I think that the business community needs to understand, um, you know, it will affect their bottom line one way or the other. <laughs> and um, many times what happens is that people ignore certain things, like so, so issues of sexual harassment mm -hmm. were ignored for a long time until it brought down entire, it started bringing down entire companies, right? And so at some point it will boil over and um, it will affect your bottom line. And so 
So either do it because it's the right thing to do, mm. ideally, but also just because you know if people are not talking about something right now, it doesn't. When it happens, it it happens, right? Mm. So, so in terms of these issues of bias and fairness, like in the last year, I've seen a lot of change in how uh, other people have been paying attention to mm. it. So with that understanding, then I would encourage the business community to. Um, First of all, um, hire people uh, with diverse backgrounds, and not just for show, right? Like, <laughs> not just to say you have, you know, uh, you, I have one of this, I have one of each, you know, and not for your numbers. Um, just because, just to understand that this brings expertise, mm. a very, very valuable expertise for your products. You know, there can be one person in the room saying, "Hey, I think we should consider that." this this and that thing that we haven't considered before we release this product mm -hmm. i think we should test for x y and z before we release the product mm -hmm. this is expertise um so i want people to stop thinking about diversity inclusion as some sort of charitable effort right mm -hmm. um it's 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 expertise that people bring um so that's one thing i would say and the second thing i would say is um we should learn, um, you know, it's not just about hiring diverse groups of people, it's also about learning about the issues mm -hmm. um, uh, of these fairness considerations, bias considerations, accountability, transparency. Yes. Um, and, um, and kind of take these things seriously, get educated. Um, and every time you release a product, think about whether the benefits outweigh the risks. Mm. You know, don't just think of things in the abstract. If you're going to release a face recognition or automated facial analysis tool, for example, think about the context, the social context we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who's being adversely affected versus who's, you know, benefiting from mm -hmm. it. And whether you're releasing this product, the benefits outweigh the risks. So, yeah, so I, it's, it's all on us. You know, there's not no single person who has more of a responsibility ethically than the other. Like every single person involved has a responsibility. Mm, it's all on us, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Timney, thank you so much for joining to me today. It was thank an absolute you. pleasure to meet you. Thank and you for having thank me. you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu.